Hello everybody, my name is Ayo. Hi, I am Christiana Banayot. Hello, my name is Michaela Nicolau. My name is Nicolas Lisandro and we're students from Pascal English School Nicosia. Our topic is stem cells and we'll be focusing on stem cell therapy. The first question we have is what are stem cells? Stem cells are the building blocks of the body. They are unspecialized cells that are capable of becoming any type of cell. Stem cells as they divide become the specialized cells of tissues that make up organ systems like the heart, brain, muscles and lungs. But are you what do stem cells do? Stem cells serve as a repair system in the body. Stem cells can either transform from an organ specific cells or they can divide and self-replicate into new stem cells. Interesting, isn't it? Now this allows stem cells to repair and replace tissues that are old or damaged. Also stem cells can reduce inflammation or swelling and can repair muscles, bones, tissues or cartilage. I know, I told you it's interesting. Anyways, there were some cases where stem cells were used to repair the tissues of major organs. What do you mean major organs? Give us some examples. Major organs such as brain and heart. All of this made stem cells a new focus in medicine called stem cell therapy. The third question we have is where are stem cells found and how are they taken out from the body? These are four sources of stem cells. The first are embryonic stem cells which are the cells of an embryo that develops into a baby. These are the strongest and most versatile ones. Then there are adult stem cells, which are found in the bone marrow, bloodstream and body fat of an adult. These are more limited in what type of cells they can produce. Stem cells are also found in the umbilical cord blood. And finally, pluripotent stem cells. Pluripotent stem cells are adult stem cells that have been genetically reprogrammed into cells that act like embryonic stem cells. There are two ways to take stem cells from the body of an adult. The first is by removing them from the bone marrow. Bone marrow has the biggest concentration of stem cells, but it requires removing bone marrow of the donor in an operating room. The stem cells are then removed from the bone marrow in a lab. The second way is to get the stem cells directly from the blood. Blood is taken from the vein of a donor and is put into a special machine called centrifuge, which spins and separates the blood into its different parts. This concentrates the stem cells and they can be removed. However, this process has to be repeated several times. Once the stem cells are harvested, then they can be used for stem cell therapy. Our fourth question is what can be done with them? Stem cells can be directly injected into the patient's affected body part. Sometimes, depending on what's being treated, they can be directly injected into the bloodstream and they will go directly to the inflamed or swollen area of the body. There are many areas of medicine that are testing stem cell therapy, including neurological diseases like Parkinson's, spinal cord injuries, blood-related diseases, some cancers, and type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes patients have too much sugar in their blood because their immune system has destroyed the cells that signal the release of insulin to remove the extra sugar. Normal type 1 diabetes patients need daily blood testing and insulin shots. Stem cell therapy for diabetes involves harvesting adult stem cells from either bone marrow, fat tissue, or blood, or using umbilical cord stem cells and injecting them into the patient's bloodstream. The stem cells travel to the pancreas, but they produce the new cells that are needed to signal insulin release. Scientists have also been able to successfully engineer pluripotent stem cells to produce the missing cells. Now this is just one of the many ways how stem cells are being used in medicine today. This leads to our final question. Are there any complications with stem cell therapy? Stem cell therapy can develop good for people. 
but it might cause unwanted consequences as well. For example, a person's immune system could reject or attack the new stem cells. Even briconic stem cells are used, they can grow red white or specialize into different types of cells at once. A person could also develop symptoms such as mouth and throat pain, nausea and vomiting, skin rashes or changes, and tiredness. Back to me again. So in conclusion, stem cell therapy will obviously be the future of medicine. Even though it has some possible risks, but the benefits of stem cell therapy, once it has been studied more, will be surely worth it. It is very important to remember that stem cell therapy is new, while it is not always a cure, but it is possible to improve someone's condition. In the future, stem cells might have the ability to cure certain types of cancer allow people to walk again, and even give people back the function of their minds. And this would be incredible.